QuickBooks Online 2023. Populate invoice using billable item that was created from purchase order or PO. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars Practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window, type into the search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to use the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one that Get Great Guitars company files in, and the business view, the one that the sample company is in. You can switch between the two views by selecting the cog up top and switch the view down below. Let's open up some tabs or duplicate tabs in order to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top, duplicate it like we do every time, right click in the tab up top, duplicate it, back to the tab to the middle, reports on the left, opening up the big balance sheet, one of the favorites that we open up every time. By the way, if you're in the business view, you go to the business overview and then the reports to open the balance sheet, that's where they're located back to the accounting view back to get great guitars tab to the right reports on the left other favorite report profit and loss the income statement close up the boogie change the range 01012320223 months for the breakdown we want to see month by month run it to to refresh it there's jan there's feb there's the total of jan and feb tab to the middle close up the boogie range to the change from 01012302283 and then i'm just going to run that one that's the setup process that we do every time in prior presentations we entered a purchase order then we entered a bill now we're going to turn around and use that information to create an invoice let's take a look at the flow chart real quick if we look at the purchase order and the bill that's part of the purchasing process but the inventory will span from the purchasing process to the customer cycle and we're using a perpetual inventory system therefore we imagine a scenario someone came into the shop they said hey i want this guitar from fender and we're like fender we don't buy guitars from them that would be a new vendor so we set up the new vendor fender made the purchase order and told the purchase order or put on the purchase order that we're buying these guitars this inventory for a particular customer not because we need that to populate the purchase order form for fender the new vendor the new vendor fender doesn't care but so that we can then use that information to then make an invoice once we get the guitars so now we've received the the guitars and we entered a bill so that's the next step that we have we still need to pay off the bill but at this point in time, we have the guitars at this point, and we would like to turn around now and create an invoice, the revenue side of things, billing the customer for the guitars that we now have and have purchased. Now, there's a bit of an issue in that when we have a billable item, they don't pull over to the, to the uh, invoice perfectly because they're going to pull over at cost, which is actually a little bit different than the desktop version, which actually pulls over with the the item quite nicely and so i just want to point that out when you're using this kind of system so let's go back to the first tab and let's just track what we have done if i go to the expenses area here i can look at my vendors and i'm going to close this out i'm going to say clear the filters and i want to look at all my vendors and just pick up fender here and you can see that we had a purchase order that was the start of the process 
And so there is our purchase order. New music stuff was who we purchased it for. The customer that we had here, closing that back out. And then we bill, we entered the bill. And then within the bill, notice I, I didn't check this off as being billable last time. I'm gonna make that change. I'm gonna say, okay, here's the new customer. I'm gonna make it a billable item so that I can then turn around and create the invoice. Now you have to be careful with this, however, because like I say, the billable thing only generally pulls in the cost instead of using the item to pull in the sales price, but it can still help us to give give us that link. So you might use this customer field uh, just, to, just to show you that you can then make an invoice matching this or you can use this billable item, but you have to be careful to do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's billable here. Uh, we can apply the tax to it. And then I'm gonna say, save it and close it. So now I've made that bill billable. The transaction you are editing is linked to others. I'm gonna say that should be okay. And then I'm going to uh, go to the other side, which is an invoice, meaning customer cycle now. Now we're in the customer cycle as opposed to the vendor cycle, turn around an invoice music stuff store i think it was is that who we're inventory music 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 stuff store or something like that some crazy name that i came up why is this showing here music stuff new music stuff and there it goes i had to log out and back into it but i typed in two new music stuff and there there's the billable item so i'm going to pull in the billable item and so now I, I'm, this is an invoice. So I, I, if I was to send it to him, I would need the email, but I'm not going to add it for the practice problem terms. And let's say the date is let's keep that date. That's fine. And then down here, it has populated the SQ Squire and you got the number correct. But note that if I type down here, an SQ Squire, then the sales price is 244. So this, it does everything else properly. It looks like meaning it's, a, it's applying it out, not usually when I use that billable, I, whenever you use the billable item, it, it will on like a utilities expense type of thing. Uh, and you want it to go to an income account, it'll, it'll charge it to its own income account like we saw before. This one still seems to, this still seems to work to charge to the income account that the item is going to. And it, it seems to properly do the inventory and decreasing the inventory and the cost of goods sold, but it doesn't seem to pull in the rate correctly. It pulls in the cost, even though we want the sales price. So that's what I'm going to change here. I'm going to say 244 and then I'm going to delete it. So I got to remember to do that little tweak or else it's going to be a problem. All right. So there we have it. All right. So then down below, I'm going to make the change down here for the rate. You could change it. I'm going to make it a generic 5%. You can do it here or I'm going to hit the drop down and I made this 5% just to make it generic and not like a California problem, but just sales tax in general being calculated. And so there we have it. So what's this going to do? It's an invoice. It's going to increase the accounts receivable 5,124 for the full amount plus the sales packs. The other side is going to go to sales, which is driven by this item. It shouldn't be going to just the billable uh, revenue line, which is so, and I think that will happen even though we use the billable thing to pull it in. The other side is gonna to go to sales tax, sales tax for the 244, and then inventory will be going down, which is uh, driven by this item, by the cost. And the, I believe this item will still work even though we did the billable thing to do that. And the cost of goods sold will go up. Net income impact will be revenue minus the cost of goods sold and the inventory in units for the sub ledger will also be going down for the 20 units, which again, should work well, I believe, even though we pulled this over with the billable item thing. All right, so let's save it and close it and double check that. Save it and close it. Tab to the right, tab to the right, skip to the loo, tab to the right. And then we're gonna go down and say accounts receivable and go into the accounts receivable. And there it is. Let's check it out. That's for the full amount uh including the sales tax looks good let's close that out let's go back to the balance sheet back to balance and go to the tab to the right let's run it again and so notice that 
most billable items as we saw before if it if it wasn't assigned an item it had to put it into this 200 billable expense the items are what's driving it to this one here so even though i used that billable thing to pull it over and it didn't really populate the amount correctly it did populate the the proper income account which is driven by the item so if i go into here and i check out this invoice the item here did drive it to the proper income account which we told it to do by item otherwise it would have gone into that billable thing if it was doing it by the billable thing so i'm going to close that out so i don't know why they can't get the cost the sales price instead of the cost i wish they can fix that little quirk which i'm hoping that they will at some point but it's been a while now and then the other side is going to go into the sales tax so there's the sales tax and then we also have inventory going down Here's the inventory. Inventory is decreasing by uh, by actually yeah by this amount, the three thousand uh, three sixty here, and then scrolling up, we also have going to the tab to the right, we've got the cost of goods sold being impacted, it going up the cost of goods sold. There it is, and then. The impact on net income is the income increased minus the cost of goods sold. And then on the balance sheet, the accounts receivable, we should also have a sub ledger. So if I go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate it, looking at that by who owes us the money, we can open up a report like that, go into the reports to the left hand side, closing up the hand boogie, scrolling down to who owes you. Let's take a look at the accounts receivable summary report. Change that range to 022823, run it, run in. And so here we have it. So here's our customers, adds up to the 1981150. Does that tie out to the balance sheet? There it does. We also, of course, if I go to the tab to the left, we now have, if I go to the to the sales side, the customer center, and if I open up my customers, then I can sort my customers by who owes us money. So open invoices. And so there is that. And then here's new music stuff. So new music stuff. And I think that's the one. And then I can go into this one there's i believe the invoice we can send the invoice we can send a statement on it if we cho so choose and the next step of course is we expect to be receiving a payment on it and so if i was in the other view by the way which is the business view then you can find that in the get paid and paid area it's in the vendor section and then actually no it's not in the vendor section it's in the customers we're looking at customers now we're on the customer side of things. And then you can also find that by opening up the hamburger sales side. And I could go into the sales transactions and sort the transactions by invoice. I could do it up here, open invoices. And here's open down here too. So I can look at it that way. Where's that in the business view, you may ask, or you may not, you may not care. But I'm going to show you anyway, because it's a little bit different. It's down here in the in the bookkeeping, transactions, and then sales items. So there's that. And then if I go to the in, go to the balance sheet, we also have the inventory that needs a sub ledger by units. So if I go to the tab to the right, open up the ham boogie, scroll down to the reports. Let's go in and check out the in the uh, inventory valuation summary just to make sure that everything's in order 022823 with that report close up the boogie so that now lines up to 6266 i still have a negative unit of a gsb which is kind of unusual but because i messed up we messed up sorry but it we're still okay so 6266 so if i go over here then we've got the 6266 that ties out that looks good so everything looks like it ties out and therefore the world is okay for for now so let's go and open the let's go to the tap let's open up our trial balance and 
try and trusty trial balance as, lo as long as stuff ties out then we then the world will be fine on your on your quickbooks file so it's going to go from 01 01 23 to 02 28 you could run it on a side by side month by month situation too we're looking at february but you might want to look at those beginning balances why why not and so if your numbers tie out to these numbers great if not try expanding the range and if there's a difference you can drill down make the changes to the difference if not at the end of the month of data input we will do a transaction detail report which might help drill down on any differences